how does superannuation work? This is it, it's key to understand the basics of superannuation. So I'll cover that off quickly, and then we'll talk about some of the strategies, investment options, and answer your direct questions as well. So how does superannuation work? Well, effectively, it's a bucket of money. That's your money. It's not the government's money. It's free to, for you uh, to invest how you will, and uh, it has a large impact on your. Uh, outcome in retirement as well. So it's important to understand that it's yours and uh, how it functions. The government does put some rules around it when you can access it uh, depending on what particular age you're at but it is your money so it's important to understand that. How much you have, how little or the large amount you have it is one of the major uh, factors uh, that will de determine your life uh, beyond the paid works for. So it's really important to uh, get your head around superannuation and uh, utilise it to the maximum um, that you possibly can. Now, if the amount of money that you have in your superannuation has such a significant uh, impact on your life, understanding how you get more money into it is important. There are three main ways of getting money into superannuation. The first and most common way is through your employer contributions. Now during the 2014-15 financial year, the amount your employer is to put into your superannuation account is 9.5% of your total package uh, as shown here. Now the current government has extended that rate out until uh, 2021 and it's not until uh, 20 the financial year 2021-22 that'll start to increase to 10% and then by 2025 your employer contributions will increase to 12%. So there has been an, a change in that that could change in the future but that's the current uh, settings at the moment. So that's the first way in which you can get money into your superannuation and it's the most common through your employer contribution. Now the second method is through your own personal contributions. Now depending on your particular circumstances, you can boost your superannuation balance by making additional contributions uh, prior to paying income tax. That's called um, salary sacrifice contributions. And similar to salary sacrifice contributions, in some situations you can make personal deductible contributions. Contributions tax is payable. The benefit of it is that it's usually the tax payable is lower than your marginal tax rates, what you would pay if you received the money as income. You can also make uh, what we call non-concessional contributions. This involves putting money that you've got in your bank account that you've potentially already paid tax on and putting it into your super. Now, when you put money into your super in this scenario, there's no tax payable on the way in to the super fund. Uh, the final method of getting money into your superannuation is via the government. Um, and the two most common ways of, of the government putting money into your super fund is the government co-contribution. If you're eligible for that, you can put $1,000 into your super fund and the government will add another $500 to your fund. Or in the past couple of years, there's been the low income superannuation contribution scheme where the government rebates or provides, gives back to you the 15% contributions tax that you've paid into your fund if you're considered a low income earner and that's under $37,000 of income each uh, financial year. So as your employer, uh, you personally and the government puts funds into your superannuation account, you may be wondering what happens to the money in your account. Now, depending on the investment option that you've got your bucket of money invested in, it could be invested in companies and that's generally via shares or, or sometimes called equity. It might be invested in property and it might be invested in cash, fixed interest and bonds. Now we'll talk about later which is the best option uh, for your particular stage uh, as in the combination of these types of investments. The unique thing about Christian Super is that about 8 or 9% of the funds uh, are invested in other investments like microfinance and uh, green technology and other, I guess, ethical investments as well that, that probably sit under the, these types of categories, under these three categories, but they're also, they also have an ethical uh, bent to them. Now, investing the money within your super will help increase your superannuation balance, but uh, as many of you have been through the global financial crisis, sometimes um, there can be short-term uh, decreases in the value of your superannuation and this is a drain on your superannuation. Now there are other drains on your superannuation. The other one is tax and it's, it's just important to explain how tax works. So within your fund and getting money into your fund. So when your employer puts $100 into your superannuation bucket, 15% of it or in this case $15 of our hundred dollars is paid in contributions tax. Your fund, Christian Super, uh, deducts this money from your account, leaving you $85 in your superannuation fund. Now, if your 
taxable income is over 300000 then that contributions tax increases to 30%. So you'll lose $30 if you're 100 and you'll have $70 remaining in your superannuation fund. So that's the tax that occurs on the way in. If you make personal contributions or what we call non-concessional contributions, there's no tax payable on those contributions into your superannuation fund. Now, what happens in terms of tax within your fund is that... Um, it is taxed at 15% as well. So if you've got $1,000 in your fund and it earns 10% or $100, then it's taxed at 15% or $15. So of the $100 of your earnings, 15% or $15 comes out of your fund, leaving you with a balance of $1,085. There's tax on the way in, there's tax within the fund, and depending on um, which phase you're in within your superannuation fund, you can avoid this tax so let's have a look if you are of your preservation age which is different depending on your date of birth ranging from 55 to 60 so you can see your date of birth here and your preservation age uh, down here is at the age at which you can move your superannuation fund to pension phase if you move your money to pension phase then you no longer pay this earnings tax it comes to you tax free and therefore you can maintain that $15 tax within your super so that's why it's important to consider whether once you reach your preservation age you should move to pension phase because often it provides some great value the other drain on your super are, are, are fees so there is a cost of administ administering your fund but uh, Christian super being in an industry fund those fees uh, are, are reasonably low there are other drains on your super fund and that's your insurance premiums these are great and we'll talk about the benefits of insurance within your superannuation fund and how it doesn't impact your cash flow but it does provide you great cover should something happen to you uh, and you can therefore provide for yourself or your family but insurance premiums do come out of your fund and they do um, create a drain on your fund and so it's important to consider your amount of insurance that you have in your fund uh, as to whether it's the right level because you could reduce the amount of premium and the fees that are going out of your account if you've got too much uh, insurance cover depending on your particular circumstances. So we've talked about how you can get money into your superannuation account, we've talked about um, what happens to the money in your account. The next thing is how you get money out of your superannuation account. You can do this in two formats. One is through a uh, drawing a pension. So this is regular payments out of your superannuation that can fund your retirement living or whatever you like to spend your, um, your money on. Um, there are requirements that we'll talk about of, of when you can actually access the money. But you can also, if you've satisfied certain requirements, draw your money out of your superannuation in lump sum. So you might use that to pay down your mortgage, you might use it to buy a car, uh, you know, fund missionaries or uh, do your own travel. So they're the ways in which you can withdraw money from your superannuation, either in the form of a pension or regular payments or lump sums.